Hey everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. So much 7.3.5 is on the PTR and today we're just going to round off the main features, the smaller details, and also talk a bit about the expected release date so that, well, you pretty much know what's, uh, what's going to be up. And there's no point messing around, so let's just get straight into the video. First, we're going to talk about the release date because I think that's one of the bigger questions. As I'll cover in a bit, there is a minor update to the Call of the Scarab event. First, this, you know, takes place in Silithus, which is certainly a bit more relevant these days. And second, that event starts on the 21st of January 2018 and ends on the 24th. So it stands to reason that this patch will drop before that event, so that, well, the new stuff's there in time. This patch is also adding to Wrath of the Lich King time walking weekends. Now that happens next in mid-February, so again, it stands to reason that the patch will be out well before that, um, yet given the new time walking Ulduar, which is definitely a feature that's very exciting. Now, the other relevant details are, of course, the Antorus LFR ones. So the final wing of Antorus LFR comes out on the 16th of January. Now, it's a uh you know, it's a bit off because the 21st of January in the AQ event, that starts on a Sunday. Of course, Sunday's not a patch day. So I think what will happen is that we'll see this patch making it onto live servers on the 16th of January. This gets it in time for Call of the Scarab, um, also for the time walking. And it adds as well the Antorus epilogue into the game right as masses of players will be killing Argus on LFR. Or at the very least, it's LFR day one on that boss, so they're all dying and sad. But hey, I think that does make a lot of sense. So with the release date covered, let's talk about backpacks. We all love having larger bags, and 7.3.5 is going to help with a slight catch. So our standard backpack can be upgraded to 20 slots if you attach an authenticator to your account. Having an authenticator is, um, well, it pretty much just means your account's not really going to get compromised as long as your authentication device doesn't get compromised, and that's probably your phone, so, I mean, is someone really going to mug you in the street and use that to steal your WoW account? I don't really think so. Now, the authenticator's not as bad as it used to be, um, like, it's pretty easy to use, and logging in the same IP won't um, make an authentication, like, happen, so, yeah, I'd say it's pretty much worth doing for the four free bag spaces. Next, we've got something that's potentially potentially quite exciting. Uh, now, Blizzard haven't said much about this, but Muffinus has been doing his usual teasing on Twitter. So, Una is a long-dead Draenei child who got grafted into an Urzel. It's quite nice, not a good way to go. Now, you can get her today as a battle pet by killing the Many-Faced Devourer, which is a rare elite, and it needs to be summoned in by collecting a bunch of bones. Uh, you'll see some stuff up on the screen for the Wowhead comment, which is a great guide for that. Now, I would recommend picking up that battle pet now if you're interested, because something happens with her in this patch. There's a bunch of data mining that points to there being a challenge associated with her. Now, I don't want to go into the spoilers and the data mined text or any of that in this video, but from what we can tell, it seems to be an event of a caliber similar to the deaths of Chromie. So ideally, it's decently replayable content with a sort of problem-solving based challenge for you to overcome. It's really the kind of thing that can just sort of exist outside of the game's normal content and progression. This might end up being a bit of a hidden gem, much like with the deaths of Chromie, but we'll need to wait and see. Right now, I almost think it might have a bit of a secretive element too in regards to its unlock because it's not been touted as like a major patch feature that we'll go and just do in day one. Okay, next, the epilogue quest. This patch is going to be giving you the epilogue that wraps up the immediate aftermath of Antorus. We're not going to get into spoilers here, but it does begin to bring up the future plot lines that will be relevant for the upcoming Before the Storm novel, and then, of course, for Battle for Azeroth, the expansion itself. Now, I've talked about this stuff before. If you're interested in spoilers, I mean, check out the channel, but yeah, we're going to keep this video spoiler-free. Next, we've got the leveling revamp. So, after years of neglect, the leveling process of World of Warcraft is not terrible. In fact, it's quite good, and being my typical self, I've managed to squeeze three videos out of this one so far. Uh, but if you want to see what that's like, check those videos out. There's one which is a comparison between 7.3.5 and live, so you can see what the new system is like. And then recently, a video that's testing out the Iron Man leveling challenge in the new system. That was a viewer suggestion for a video, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing it. The core stuff that you need to know here is that Legion scaling has been applied across the, well, all of the leveling zones in the game. So these two kingdoms and Kalimdor now scale up to level 60, so it's basically impossible to out-level a zone. Zones uh, do still have a minimum level bracket, but they are quite broad in general. 
then the health of mobs has, well, it's pretty much been doubled or more across the board, and this combined with the Legion launch changes to leveling, which gave classes a lot more of their abilities earlier on, essentially means that, say, leveling a character at level 45, well, it feels like a simplified but still representative version of your endgame gameplay. This means that class mechanics really do shine in the leveling, and the new players will be able to properly get to grips with how the game actually works and properly enjoy a class earlier on as they level. This will hopefully lead to more people being invested in the game and hopefully will bring, well, people should be a bit more familiar with their class mechanics by the time they hit 110 and that would certainly be a nice thing. The expansion leveling brackets have also been merged, so Outland and Northrend scale from 58 to 80 and then Cataclysm and Mop scale from 80 to 90. Then it's the usual Draenor from 90 to 100 and then of course Legion from 100 to 110. Next, we've got Mythic Plus Combat Reses. They're basically changing how this works in patch 7.3.5. It may be changed, it is PTR, but basically it's moving over to the raid system. So you have basically party-wide ch uh, charges of your battle res. You start with one, and a new charge is generated every 18 minutes. Things like Ancestral Spirit probably won't count to this. So, yeah, this is definitely... It, it's tuning your access to combat reses in Mythic Plus downwards, and I suppose it's an attempt to balance the power of combat reses, and especially when considering various different team comps and things like that. Of course, Blizzard has quite a desire for competitive Mythic Plus to be an esport, something we recently saw with the highly successful Mythic Plus Invitational, so it's pretty much in line with those goals. Okay, next we've got a new battleground, the Seething Shore. Yeah, Finally, the first bloody one since 2013. Now, it is based on the factions struggling for control of the new Azerite resource, which has been bubbling up to the surface in and around the sill of this area, and of course will be a major part of the upcoming expansion. Now, the battleground is actually taking place on a small island off the coast of Silithus, not Silithus it's, uh, itself, and uh, you can see it's pretty much using the Lost Isles um, tile set. Now, it's an area control map with a bit of a twist, so of the, uh, the 12 possible Azerite locations, only a handful of them are active at any given time. This means the map's a bit more dynamic, as much as that's a buzzword. So, like, different paths will become relevant depending on the currently active Azerite locations, which I suppose in theory should give this a bit more replayability. And um, let's, of course, just hope that the pathing and spawn locations and all that stuff is done in such a way that overall it's a pretty balanced uh, thing. Now, when you look at the map, you can see there's uh, the rapids, so I'm assuming that, you know, it's like water that'll carry you downstream. If you've got a bridge, there's one location off um, on the islands, so there should be a bit of verticality there, and um, yeah, I mean, overall, I think the layout seems like it'll feel pretty different to AB and the likes, so definitely good. I hope the Blizzard continue to add more Battleground maps, and even just adding more maps with different layouts of the same game type would be great. Eventually, I'd love it so I could hit the PvP window, queue up for a Capture the Flag playlist, or a King of the Hill playlist, or something like that. But yeah, there you go. It's not a lot, but it is something new for PvP. Okay, Concordance of the Legion Fall until we are all dead. So, not only will we be having four Star Wars movies a year, ten Marvel movies a year, but you'll also be able to grind Concordance of the Legion Fall until you're in the grave or at least want to be. So it's been increased from 50 ranks up to 100 ranks in patch 7.3.5 a lot of ranks. Now, the rank 100 Concordance, should you ever reach there, will increase your primary stat by a rather silly 53,000 currently in the PTR, which uh, I don't know if that'll be a thing, but we'll see. It seems like, though, they are going to be raising the maximum for Concordance. Okay, so this next thing is not a feature, it's more just a hint. So, there's some encrypted mounts and a pet, and there's an en uh, encrypted um, Tortala pet, there's a Raptor mount and a Stallion. This pretty much means they're a part of some sort of promotion, and it likely, uh, you know, the answer to that likely is that it's the Battle for Azeroth Collector's Edition. Uh, getting a mount for each faction, given the theme of the expansion, makes a lot of sense. Getting a pet makes a lot of sense for the Collector's Edition, and they will be put into the game now so that if someone pre-orders the Collector's Edition digitally, they would get the rewards instantly. So, just another thing pointing towards battle, probably not being too far away from pre-order. Next, we've got the Postmaster's Challenge. So, a bunch of stuff has been data mined for something called the Postmaster's Challenge. This seems to be some sort of mini-game that you'll be able to do when the patch comes out. Uh, essentially, uh, if you do well in it, you'll get the Postmaster title as well as an elemental battle pet. So, it's probably a little bit of fun you can have, you know, at some point and get yourself a pet. Not a massive feature, though. Next, Ulduar Time Walking. So, Ulduar is now going to be 
part of Wrath of the Lich King time walking, and this does bring some decently broad changes. Now, the first opportunity you'll have to experience this is from the 13th to the 20th of February 2018, so it is just a little bit off. Now, this is kind of similar to Black Temple time walking, but unlike BT, Ultuar had 10 and 25 player modes. Uh, this is gone in the PTR, it's replaced with one mode, which is just called Ulduar Normal. Boss loot tables now contain both the 10 and 25 player versions of the loot, and doing a you know a hard mode will result in an extra cache of loot dropping. It seems like the average amount of loot per player is the same as today, like in a 10, if you've got like a full stack of people there, but it mightn't be great for farming, because right now you can, you know, you can solo 25, get loads of gear. And on the PTR, though, it's on the flex system, so if you go in, you'll be getting 10 players worth of gear, which I believe right now is three pieces. Um, so, yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a loss for, say, someone who wants to specifically farm a 25-player difficulty gear set. So, that's what's kind of up there. Now, the achievements have also been merged. So, if you have completed the 10-player raid meta achievement, um, you'll actually get the 25-player mount now, and, you know, vice versa. Basically, they're just all being merged together, and you retroactively get credit. Now, we've not we've yet to completely confirm this, but it looks like farming Mimron's head will be a little bit easier. You'll be fighting a version of Yogg Zero that is scaled to 10 players, not 25, so it'll probably go a, a little bit faster. Now, if memory serves, mounts like that have a fixed drop rate, so a drop rate that doesn't scale the number of players. So I believe this does mean that for clearing the instance once, you will still have the same drop chance for getting them out as you would have previously. So it's not like, you know, it, it you know, goes from 25 to 10 and there's a drastically reduced chance of getting them out. It should still be a fixed drop. Next, there are actually updated versions of the Anchorage Silithid mounts. These are connected to the Call of the Scarab event and a lot of players thought, it would be, you know, so the black uh, Karaji war tank is a, or battle tank, whatever, is a super rare mount. You could only get it 10 years ago. A lot of players were worried that that was just going to be given to everyone. That's not the case. These new mounts are only going to be usable during the event itself. I do wonder if a Silithid mount at some point will make it into the game, but... Yeah, uh, for now, doesn't seem like that's uh, really the case, and we are just getting a bit of an update to that event, which of course ties into the release date discussion that we had at the start of this video. Next, let's talk about allied races. So, the data is there in this patch, but... The unlock probably isn't. Current data mining points to you needing to have purchased the Battle of Razoroth expansion to unlock this new feature, so I think it's quite likely a pre-order bonus. Now, I have covered the feature in depth, so if you want to check out the video on that, well, you know, you can do that on the channel. I would not worry too much about these guys right now, as I think they'll be at minimum a few months away from the patch release date. Of course, we're seeing a lot of pre-order slash um, collector's edition stuff be added. We've got the new allied races stuff here. We've got those encrypted mounts for Hearthstone. There's a Battle for Azeroth card back. There's a Battle for Azeroth uh, spray or icon or something for StarCraft 2. So they're beginning, all those things are beginning to make it into the builds of various different Blizzard titles. And of course, saving the best for last. Selfie cam requests here. <laughs> Wow, so you can now get the selfie camera toy uh, through a quest line in Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Basically, you don't have to go back to your garrison if you want this amazing, magical, uh, next-level, brilliant feature for World of Warcraft. They have also added a filter for it, which adds Draenor back into the sky, which actually I'm kind of interested in because it could be quite useful for content creation in the future. But there you go, that's pretty much it for the changes that are coming in this patch. For endgame players... And it's not that much really, but the clear focus here is to have players leveling up new characters in preparation for the new expansion. This normally wouldn't be an exciting thing, but the new leveling system, I think, is a massive improvement, and it really does change that. So I think for a lot of people, this patch, while not having a massive amount of content, it probably will give you a decent amount of stuff to do. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think about the features in this patch and if you plan to level up a stack of new characters before battle comes out. But with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.